let's just uh, take a quick second to do a timestamp on where we stand right now. Obviously, last month, um, reports of a serious adverse event and a UK-based participant in the Phase 3 international trial for the Astra AstraZeneca adenovirus vaccine candidate uh, led to some uh, concerned responses, um, eventually an independent committee looking into the safety outcomes that were currently available and the status of the patient who um, suffered a non-fatal event, uh, thankfully, obviously, um, but sort of put a stall on this great international trial that was mostly resumed aside for the U.S. Um, reports last week now showing that the FDA has decided uh, mm -hmm. to conduct its own assessment of the safety outcome data that's currently available. And uh, if we want to just start there, Dr. Dr. Calhoun, I, I wanted to ask for your perspective on um, you know, the FDA's decision to conduct its own analysis of this vaccine. Great, yes, and certainly everything um, that you mentioned is of interest to, to many of us, particularly those of us who work in infectious diseases. Um, and maybe it would be helpful for the audience just to remind everyone about the, the phases and what occurs during phases of vaccine development and, and exploration. So phase one is really where we, we test vaccines on healthy subjects, primarily to assess for the safety of the administration. And that's also a time when, when researchers have done um, some preclinical studies to figure out how is the vaccine best administered? Is this an intramuscular injection? Can this be administered um, orally? That sort of thing. So phase one really looks for safety. Um, we know that that vaccine passed through phase one, it went through phase two, which also assesses for safety. Um, but phase two and phase three can start assessing for efficacy or how well the vaccine is actually providing protection. What I think we could all take some comfort in is that, you know, through all phases of, of exploration and study, the safety never, never gets neglected, right? We, we, we record very diligently what happens to all subjects who are involved in, in phase trials for vaccines. And this is just providing us reassurance that, yeah, we're not just looking at the clinical outcome of protection, but we're also continually to watch for safety. Now, there were some... Um, information shared about what happened to this particular um, person in, in this unfortunate situation, which sounds like it was something involving his spinal cord, although many of the details um, weren't, weren't shared with the general public. Yeah. But nevertheless, I think we have this um, reassurance that there is this oversight for vaccine trials, despite our need to expedite this particular one um, because of the national crisis and international crisis. Um, but I think it's appropriate that the FDA um, made that decision to start to investigate independently and um, really make sure that there's an added layer of, of oversight and protection so that we can have faith in the vaccine and that people are trustworthy and know that the process was appropriate despite the need for, um, for some urgency. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and um, that actually feeds really well into my next question. Um, you know, just regarding our current situation, uh, you know, in which these vaccines are being agreed to be distributed already in hundreds of millions of doses for entire nations at a time. Uh, these are billion dollar deals. There's there's a lot riding on this. How mu how much of our current situation sort of influences the level of scrutiny we would see in a situation like this from from the FDA, who's going to regulate it eventually anyway? Yeah, well, I think um, particularly in our democracy, we put a lot of faith in our in our um, national organizations and authoritative organizations. And so they have to be spot on, right? They have to have reputable folks and responsible folks who are going to look at the data and make data driven data driven decisions based on the safety and efficacy of these vaccines. We're all trusting that. And, and that is the job of the FDA. Um, you know, one of the things that I think warrants some conversation much people are going to adopt the vaccine and how willing are people going to be to go out and get the vaccine knowing that it was um, you know br relatively brand new um, and the way that we convince the general public to do that and to show them that it is in fact beneficial is to know that it was scrutinized at every level and that we had the right brilliant minds looking at it and reviewing the data and making those decisions for both safety and efficacy yeah yeah, I, I certainly agree with that point that, um, you know, a lot of people are expressing a lot of concern right now, um, if not just by the, the name of the program that's just fall under Operation uh, Warp Speed, obviously uh, <laughs> raises concerns about the expediency of this and, and mm -hmm. uh, almost the rush nature of this and people want to feel more assurance and um, in spots where maybe we're compromising long-term safety outcome data because we, we've only got months at a time here available. Um, certain measures like this do speak to, uh, you know, uh, 
a continued scrutiny and monitoring and surveillance of these vaccines that's sort of been right. assured with all the other products that we have available right now, right? Right, right. And I would remind folks that, you know, this isn't a, when the trial is over and the vaccine goes to market, whoever is that winner, um, it doesn't stop, right? We don't stop studying the safety and efficacy of vaccines. I mean, we refer to something as, as post-market or phase four trials, which clinicians, pharmacists, um, others involved in healthcare can still report adverse reactions and adverse outcomes, right? And then we look to see how strong is that association to the presumed agent, which in this case would be the vaccine. So there will be plenty of, of opportunities and plenty of time later to still monitor the safety and the health of the people who get it. And if, if there were dire outcomes, if there were fatal cases, God forbid, if there were really bad outcomes, then that's when things get pulled from the market or at least suspended from the market. So um, everyone will continue to monitor that. Um, all clinicians are well informed on how they report adverse outcomes and to whom are those reports made. You know, it comes in every um, paperwork that comes with every vial of a vaccine. So folks are, are well aware about how to report adverse outcomes. So that should be another level of reassurance for the general public. Absolutely. And Dr. Calhoun, um, obviously factors outside of, you know, public concern and, and scrutiny toward uh, viruses as a whole. Um, you know, this is a very special situation where we've seen involvement from every facet of, of leadership in the country. And I, I was curious to ask you if, uh, from, from your perspective of how this plays out, um, could this be potentially distinguished in any way uh, as an example almost being made by the FDA, uh, you know, with their continued uh, language expressing that they are not working towards any sort of timeline being set by any other authority that's outside of their uh, reign of, a, of regulation and authority. And, um, you know, again, AstraZeneca is one of these groups that actually, uh, you know, verbally agreed to the notion that they are not going to be expediting any vaccine. And obviously, uh, there's been discussion about expediting in alignment for specific dates like the presidential election next month. Mm -hmm. uh, could we perceive this at all as a, a message potentially that, hey, this is one of the most promising ones we have, and it's not getting past us. It's not um, it's not in a fast lane. It is in our lane and we're, we're calling the shots on it. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> well said. Yeah, viruses don't conform to our timelines, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and antibody production doesn't conform to our wish lists. Um, so I think we all respect the biological processes that have to occur and, yeah. and rely on the data. And, you know, that's one advantage of having huge and mass vaccine trials of, you know, 60,000 people, 100,000 people, et cetera, is that we can, we can collect data relatively quickly on folks, we can enroll folks, but, you know, the reality is, is there, there are some adverse effects that may show in the short term, and there are some that may, may, may go or, or appear elusive for the long term. So we have to make sure that we have structure in place to capture those ones and identify the ones promptly and, and effectively and appropriately early on, but also have have pro uh, procedures in place that would allow us to to document things that happen a little bit later. Um, so right, I hope that this is not going to get politicized um, by any side or by anyone. Um, and I trust in our scientific colleagues that they do the right thing by looking at the data and um, and make those decisions based only on the data and the and the clinical outcomes that were designed when the when the clinical trial was designed. So all of this, you know, the researchers had to have foresight and the clinicians as to what are our measures at the end and um, they will not be adjusted you know for political pressure so um, hopefully that remains the case and, and safety and efficacy are the only things driving this timeline 